So good evening to everyone and thanks for coming to class on time for those of you who are here. Um, as you guys know, today is a bit of a bittersweet session because uh, it's bitter that it's our last class, but it's probably sweet for some of you all because yay, it's the last class and you all don't have any more online classes with me. So um, it's a bit of a bummer, our last class, but we have um, lots of work to do today, right? So I did give you all the May 2018 paper to complete for homework, and I would be correcting that paper um, during the last hour of class. So as you can see on my screen, we will be looking at the January 2019 paper today. So the paper has um, 60 multiple choice questions, and uh, you guys are required to choose the best option and as you guys see, the time limit for the paper is that you have, you only have one hour and a half to complete the paper, okay? So I hope that when you are doing your homework, that you all try to complete the homework within the one hour and a half. So it's important to note that in this paper, there were um, a lot of repeat questions in this paper as well. And also, this is the only version of the paper that is available. And uh, there's actually one section from this paper that's missing, and you guys will see that when you um, when we are going through the numbers, right? There's one section that's missing from the paper, but unfortunately, this is the only version of this paper that is available. So let's let's start with the paper. If you guys, um, I will call on you all to answer the questions. If the person feels to answer the response, and I will ask for assistance from the other classmates. You can feel free to unmute your mic and give me your responses, or you can send your um, your feedback in the chat. Please remember that the chat is only to provide answers and any extra talking. You guys can do that on some other platform at a different um, time and date, right? So the first section of the paper, it says we have items one to five. And the instructions say each sentence in this section has one underlined word or phrase. Choose a word or phrase that is closest to opposite in meaning to the underlined word. So you are basically trying to find for me the antonyms because it says closest to opposite in meaning, right? Closest to opposite in meaning. So we're talking about the antonyms. So for this section, um, numbers one to five, um, Angelica, you will do this section. So you're going to read the sentence to me and then you'll give me the best, um, the best answer. I'm sure that these questions, you guys have seen these questions before. Okay, Miss. Um, number one, the distinguished actor avoided the press whenever he was on holidays. Um, C contacted. Very good, it is C contacted. Number two. Angelica, you're doing numbers one to five. <laughs> oh, Miss, when Mike was mute. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. There was a decline in airplane travel after that incident. Mm -hmm. um, and what's the opposite of the word decline? Increase? Yes, the answer is A, increase. Good. Number three. Paul's attitude to visiting the cave was one of indifference. Um, C? Yes, it is C, enthusiasm, because if you're feeling indifferent about something, you don't really have any feelings towards it. So the opposite of that is enthusiastic, where you are very passionate about it. Um, number four? Being friendly and helpful and characteristic of most persons from the area of the country. Um, I guess in B. Yes, it is B, uncommon in. Very good. And number five. Many teenagers and even some parents do not agree with the amount of restrictiveness in today's society. C? Yes, C, permissiveness. So for those of you who joined um, late, 
Let me just um, say about the answers for one to five. This is the, where you have to find the word that is closest to opposite in meaning. So you're finding the antonyms. Number one was C, number two A, number three C, four B and five C. So very good, thank you. Um, thank you, Angelica. So we're gonna move on to the other section of the paper. Where we're gonna look at questions six to 10. And six to 10 is basically um, the usage section. So it says in the following sentences, one of the, oh, sorry, it's spelling. One of the following words may be misspelled. So you have to choose from the three options, A, B, C, the word that is misspelled, or if you think there's no word that is spelled um, incorrectly. So I will have Sanjay do this section for me, number six to 10. Um, you're gonna read the sentence, identify the word that is spelled incorrectly, and you would also spell the corrected version for me. Okay. So number six. After embarrassing his colleague, his conscience was bothered him and eventually apologized. See? Yeah, C, conscience. How do we spell conscience? C-O-N-S-C-I-E-N-C-E. -E. Very good. So you must say con and the word science. So the S is missing here. Good. Um, number seven. Seven. It is my privilege to give you some information concerning proper nutrition. A? No, it's not A. E. D? The answer is D, there's no error. Good, number eight. Whenever there is a food crisis, the people always experience shortages of basic necessities. Necessities. C? No, it's not C. A? Yes, it is a crisis. How do we spell crisis? C-R-I-S-I-S? -I -S? Yes, I-S. So it's not supposed to be E-S, it's supposed to be I-S. Very good. Um, number nine. The nurses were allotted separate quarters because the main building did not have enough rooms for them. A? It's not A. It's D. No error. It's not D. There is an error. B? Yes, it's B separate. How do we spell separate? S E P A R R A T. So this second E is supposed to be an A. Yes, that was the error. You had to change the second E to an A. And number 10. His intelligence, rather than his height, was deciding factor when considering from the job. B? Yes, B. How do we spell height? H-E-I-G-H-T. Very good. Thank you. Oh. So the answers for 6 to 10, 6, C, 7, D, 8, A, 9, B, and 10, B. The second section, items 11 to, sorry, third section, items 11 to 15. So you have to select the option A, B, C, or D that best describes each of the sentences. And then you have to um, choose a corresponding letter. So in this instance, A means that the sentence is acceptable as it stands. So if there's no error, nothing wrong with the sentence. B, if you think that the sentence contains a cliche or a misused metaphor. C, if you read the sentence and you think it is incorrect grammatically or faulty in diction, and D, the sentence is too wordy, that is, it is repetitive or it contains redundancies. So just remember, um, one thing to note about this section is that the letters, they vary. So sometimes D will always be the one that says it is, it is acceptable as it stands, and A would be repetitive or contains redundancies. So on the day that you get your, um, your exam paper, pay particular attention to what the letters represent on that day, because the letters tend to change its meaning. So yes, we are accustomed with A being the one that is repetitive, but in this paper, A represented um, the sentence was acceptable. So pay attention on the exam day, what each letter stands for, because it changes. 
So um, numbers 11 to 15 for this section. Um, Musa. Eleven to fifteen, miss. Yes, Musa. Eleven to fifteen. So you will read each sentence to me, and then tell me your corresponding answer. The new disciplinary methods had a positive effect on the student's behavior. C. C. Uh huh. So you said that it is incorrect grammatically, a faulty in diction. What is the um, issue with this sentence? Instead of putting effect, they put affect. Yes, so the word affect is supposed to be effect, E-F-F-E-C. Good, so the answer for 11 is C. Number 12. Seldom do people declare that they are not the products of the environment. B, miss. What's the answer? B. B? Yeah. The answer is not D. C. It's not C. So you left with A and D. So there are two options, A or D. Which one do you think is the answer? A, miss. The answer is A. The sentence is acceptable as it stands. There's no error with the sentence. Um, number 13. The major ran up the street like a house on fire and shouting with all the strength he could muster, sounded the B, miss. B? Yeah. It's not B. Look at the sentence again. It's a, it's a long sentence. So the major ran up the street like a house on fire. So someone is running up the street and shouting with all the strength he could muster, sounded the alarm. C, miss. It have a comma after and. No, that's not the error. So it's not B and it's not C. Miss, I could answer. Let me see, Moose, like a figure it out first. If, he, if he's wrong on this try, then you can answer, Sandri. D, Miss, if you worry. The answer is D, yes. Besides it being too wordy, why, what is wrong with it? Because, um, D is saying that it's too wordy, it is repetitive or contains redundancies. So yes, we established the, the answer for number 13 is D, but what exactly is the issue with this sentence? Anyone knows? Let me give Musa a break for now because he has to do 14 and 15. Anybody knows what's the issue with number 13? And don't tell me it's repetitive or redundant. I want you to actually point out the error for me. It said the major ran up the street like a house on fire. Mm -hmm. what, what, what happened to that part of the sentence? It's like, I can't fuse. <laughs> well, here it's like a house can right? run up the, f like, I hear like a house on fire. That's well, a misused metaphor. That's, first of all, it's not a metaphor, it's a simile because they're comparing um, how he's running like a house on fire. We see the word like this, so it's not a metaphor. Is, this is a simile. And when this thing ran up, they're trying to say how fast he was running, like a house on fire, like how houses could be ignited really quickly. That's the simile that they're trying to paint here, how fast he ran up the street. Just as how, uh, just as how within seconds the house could be engulfed with um, flames, that's how quick he ran up the street. So nothing is wrong with the first part of the sentence. The error has to do with after um, and. Anyone else knows what's the issue with this sentence? 
The first part of the sentence is fine. This is a simile here. Shouting with all the shrinky cut master sounded the alarm. Yes, the error is with is it was with that part of the sentence, but what exactly is the um is the mistake? So honey, I say in shouting, what 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 is wrong with shouting? Well, if anything is wrong with shouting at all. Right. It is being repetitive. So I'm seeing some of you all, um, not the past and Sanjay, that, that's not the error. Just remember letter D says that it is too wordy, repetitive, or contains redundancies. So it has nothing to do with past tense here. 13, the issue is the last part of the sentence and it reads, shouting with all the strength you can muster sounded the alarm. If you are shouting with all your strength, then of course you are sounding an alarm. This is the same thing that you're saying, but you're just using different ways to do so. As long as you're shouting with all your strength, you are going to sound an alarm. You are going to sound extremely loud. So it would raise an alarm. So here's where the repetitiveness comes in, where it's being redundant, because the same thing is being said with different words. So the answer for number 13 is D. Yes, it has a lot of repetitiveness in that the same, um, the same thing was being said, but using words that were different. Number 14, Musa, you can continue with this one. If I were the captain of the West Indies cricket team, I would attack the batsmen with my fast bowlers immediately after the luncheon interval. Ms. the answer is E. E? You think it's correct? Yeah, well, it's so incorrect. There's an error. There's an error. The, the sentence is not acceptable. Yeah. What is it? C, miss. It is C, yes. Which part of the sentence is wrong? It is C, and C says it is incorrect grammatically or faulty in diction. It has I will instead of I would. Very good. The issues with the tense here is supposed to be I would. Very good. And the last one, number 15. He advanced a step or two to meet his attacker, who suddenly became alarmed and retreated back four or five feet. D, miss. D? Yeah. The answer is D. Good. What's the error? Um, a two word, miss. No, Musa. That's not the error. Good, good. I'm jobbing guessing the letter. Yes. But what miss, exactly is wrong miss. with it? I know. <laughs> so yes, <easy>. Andrew. <laughs> retreated back. Very good. The issue is with retreated back. Retreat already means to go back. Once you are retreating, it means that you are already going back. So it's like you're saying back, back. So the, uh, the issue here is with the redundancy retreated back. So the answer for 15 is D. So just to recap the, the answers from 11 to 15, number 11 was C, 12A, 13D, 14C, and 15D. So let's move on to the other section of the paper. So we have 16 to 20 here. It says some of the sentences are unacceptable because of inappropriate grammar, idiom, or vocabulary. Some sentences, they are acceptable as they stand. And no one sentence contains more than one inappropriate element. So you have to select um, the one underlying part that you feel is inappropriate and choose the corresponding letter. Or if you think that nothing is wrong with the sentence, you just select D. So remember that there could be only one error in the sentence, or if you don't find any error in the sentence, then the answer would be D, no error. So this is a usage section where you have to remember your grammar rules, your vocabulary, um, and this is where it would really be um, showcased here, your knowledge of these usage rules. 
So um, numbers 16 to 20. Um, Huda, I saw that you joined the class. So Huda, you would do numbers um, 16 to 20. Are you with us? Yeah, yeah, Miss Ayet. Okay, great. So I want you to read the sentence to me and then tell me what you think is the error with the sentence, okay? So you're starting with number 16. I, no, number 16? Yeah. Hey, Jilly. Sorry, sorry. The, ex the exhibition is a good by whom we're long boy. The exhibition is expected mm -hmm. to be a major attraction, not only for adults, but particularly, oh my God, <laughs> to school children in that area. <clears throat> Just to pick an answer too, right? Yeah, you're going to pick the answer. If you think the error is A, B, C, or if you think the sentence is fine, you choose D, no error. All right, no problem. C. Yes, the answer is C. What is particular supposed to be? Particularly. Particularly. Very good. Um, number 17. In a house for Mr. Can I name his name? Biswas. 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 Mm -hmm. Naya Paul shows that how a man may struggle against great odds to achieve those things that he most desires. C? It's not C. Hmm. Look at it again. In a house of Mr. Biswas, Naipaul shows that how a man may struggle against great odds to achieve those things that he most desires. Do so you think anything is sounding wrong with that um, sentence? A. The answer is A. Good. What's wrong with A? Like a poll shows that how that the that how something off. Yes, the that how something off. Uh huh. What is this, what is it supposed to be read as? Do we say shows that how or shows how? Just how? Yes, yeah, just how. Yeah. That isn't supposed to be there, so it's just supposed to be um, shows how. So very good. Um, number eighteen. All right. I believe that if his attitude improves, his general performance will also improve. No error. Very good. The answer is D, no error. Number 19. Peter Havdengi. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Peter Havdengi is weak, so he is unable to participate. The answer is A. Yes, it is A. What is it supposed to be read as? Has. <laughs> yes, Peter has. So the error is A, Peter has. And the last one, number 20. Too much students entered the competition. Only one of them was good enough to reach the finals. A? Eh? Good. The answer is A. What is this supposed to be read as? Too many. Very good. I see that you have an revised and you said rules. Great job. It's supposed to be many. We use much for uncountable nouns, things we can count. But in this case, we could count students, so the answer is supposed to be many, because we could count students and we use many for um, countable nouns. Thank you, Huda. No problem. So for those of you who just joined in this section, um, the answers from 16 to 20, 16 C, 17 A, 18 D, 19 A, and 20 A.
So I'm moving over to the other section. So we have items 21 to 25 and it says each sentence has either one or two words missing. Choose from the four options, the word or pair of words, which best completes the meaning of the sentences. So here, this is called the sentence completion section where you have to read the sentences and try to find the best word or pair of words that complete the sentence for it to make sense. So 21 to 25. Um, Reagan. So you would start with um, number 21. Did we lose Reagan? Okay, so um, I'll, I'll read the sentences for Reagan and I will give you all um, her responses, okay? So number 21 says, some persons, although health conscious, are unusually something to something diseases. So we're gonna say the best answer is C, they're unusually susceptible to infectious diseases. So number 21 is C, very good. Number 22, most parents do not something in discipline from their children. So what's your answer, um, Reagan? Very good, it is A, so most parents do not tolerate indiscipline from their children. Good. Number 23 says, this period requires us to radically restructure the economy to something it from what it was basically a colonial economy to a modern balance and something economy. So it's a long sentence. So we're gonna say B to transform it from what it basically was and diversify it. So the answer for 23 is B, transform and diversify, good. 24 says the lawyer gave his client some good something about taxes. So the lawyer gave his client some good what about taxes? Very good, it is A, advice. So 24 is A. And 25, the helper had worked all day, so she was something the task of preparing supper. Very good, it is A, relieved off. So the answers for 21 to 25, 21 is C, 22A, 23B, 24A, and 25A. So you just completed the first 25 questions of the paper. Let's move on to the other section. So does this poem look familiar? So does this paper, um, this poem look familiar? It's the poem on accounting. And we did this poem just last week. Do you guys remember this poem? It says, read the following poem carefully and then answer items 26 to 30 on the basis of what is stated or implied. So basically we are just going to um, see how well we remember the answers from last week because as I told you all, how we revise the multiple choice is that the questions are the same, they bring the same poem, the same options. So your challenge is to see if you could remember. So I don't want you all revisiting your, your responses from last week. I want us to try and, you know, see if we could rethink of the answers today. So it says, accounting nights too warm for TV were, were flung outdoors to the porch, such an candles candle sent in the space between us. Our faces are glowing gold light. She crowds the card table with coin banks and abacus, five and ten dollar rolling paper or tidy ledger. I count, line the coins in neat rows, the abacus clicking out our words. How much can we save? Stack up against the seasons, winter coming. 
her tightly braided hair turning white, her hands quick, filling the paper casings like homemade sausage. There's money in the bank downtown, but this will keep at home. Buried in jars beneath the house, the crawl space filling up, packed solid as any foundation. And when we went through this poem last week, we established the fact that that there is a, a, a child that we're talking about, the she that she that we're talking about is a child because um, she has a coin bank, she has an abacus, and these are all toys that little children have. And what she's doing is that she is trying to count the money that she has, and she has it being saved. Um, and now she's checking her coins because why? She's trying to stack up against the seasons since winter is coming. So she's trying to be prepared for you know the harsh effects of winter. And then it is being noted here that yes, there's money in the bank downtown, but you know, sometimes people prefer to keep some money at home. So in this case, they're gonna keep the money at home and they're gonna bury it in jars beneath the house in a crawl space. So who would most likely um, hide money underneath the house in a small crawl place? There'll be someone that's, that's really small who could fit inside there. Adults will really do that. You will, you will also find kids doing that because it's pretty humorous to you know, hide um, your money in spaces that no one would think of. So let's look at the questions and see um, what they say. 26 says the activity described in the poem is what? So what is the girl doing in the, um, in the poem? What um, is the answer? Miss B. Yes, and Raphael, I'm seeing Raphael is saying B as well. Yes, the activity described in the poem is B counting money. So the girl is counting money because she brought out her um, coin banks and her abacus to help her count money. 27, um, Shane, give me this answer. It says, which of the following words best describes she in the poem? So if you had to describe this girl, what would you describe her as? So Shane says, A, thrifty. Yes, she is thrifty because if someone is thrifty, it means that they're really good at money. They watch their money, the way they spend their money. Very good. Um, 28. 28 says, uh, line three of the poem is an example of what? And line three is when they say citronella candles sent in this space. So, um, how, uh, what, what did you remember this answer to be? Line three of the poem, when they say citronella candles sent in this space. That's an example of what um, device? We have repetition, assonance, alliteration, and euphemism. How are, do you remember um, your response for this one? So how are the line says citronella candles sent in this space? So um, that is an example of what device? Is it repetition, assonance, alliteration, or euphemism? Yes, it is C, alliteration, very good, because we have the consonant C for citronella candles, the first letter of the words um, repeating itself here, and even sent in this space, we have the S being repeated as well. Um, and we have repetition, which is basically when you see the same um, words being repeated, we have, um, a, well, we established alliteration was the answer. What is assonance and what is euphemism? Let me see if you guys remember because you guys are supposed to be revising. Um, Hania, what do you remember assonance to be? So I want Hania to tell me what she remembers assonance to be. And for euphemism, Khadija Francis, what do you remember euphemism to be? Because guys, we're supposed to be revising our literary devices because as you see, they come in the options. If you don't know what the options are, it will be extremely difficult for us to figure out the answer. So Hania, what is assonance? Um, so like the ending of the word sounds the same with the next word following it. Okay, no, that's not assonance. Honey, I'll pick someone to help you answer. I could do it. Miss, I meant like it will have like the same letter at the end of the word. 
Just remember, honey, yeah, our sentence is the opposite of alliteration, right? And we know two things about alliteration. We have the repetition of consonants. What is the opposite of a consonant? I know. Honey, yeah? What is the opposite of a consonant? In the alphabet, we have consonants and we have what? Vowels. We have vowels. So if alliteration has to do with consonants, assonance has to do with vowels. Good. So that's one thing we know about assonance so far. Um, the next difference is alliteration is where you will find the consonant at the beginning of the word. So it will be the first letter of the word. But in assonance, you would find the vowel not at the beginning of the word and not at the end, but you will find it within the word. So it's where we have the vowel song, um, the vowel sounds, but we, but we would see the sounds in the um, within the words, and not at the beginning of the words, but within the words. And for euphemism, Khadija Francis, what do you remember euphemism to be? Khadija, what do you remember euphemism to be? So Khadija is saying she can't remember. Khadija, that means that we're not revising. So we need to be revising a lot more because this was something that you guys learned um, your very first term. Rani, what do you remember euphemism to be? This was something that you, that you guys got in your literary devices handout, which you all received within your first term. In the beginning of the term, you guys are you guys supposed to know the literary devices of the band by now because as you all see, when we reach the poetry section in multiple choice, they bring a lot of questions about literary devices. If you don't know your devices, then you would get trouble to figure out the answer. So Rani, what is euphemism? Anyone remembers what euphemism is? Best when you replace any word or phrase. Something like that. You're halfway there, Cheyenne. What you mean by, what are we usually replacing? So when you see a mild or indirect word, um, are you guys seeing that when you Google what euphemism is? Because that's not what I gave you all as euphemism. I want the definition I gave you all. And then what you guys are finding on Google. Along with an example. Euphemism has been appearing in the options. Is that a polite way of saying something? Yes, Sanjay, very good. It's a very it's a polite way of saying something that is what? You give me half of the answer. Considered Sanjay. rude. Something that is considered rude, uh huh. Well again. Half. Okay. Something else is missing from that. Are you guys remembering a polite or a mild way of saying something that could be considered as rude, taboo? unpleasant. So um, let me have an example of euphemism. Alicia Maloney, what do you, um, do you remember any examples of a euphemism? A polite way of saying something that is taboo or harsh or rude or unpleasant? Like so seeing saying, somebody is um, unsmart rather than saying dotish. Um, not that, not really. Anybody wants to give me a, a different example? Mamadou. 
Alicia Mooney says she doesn't remember. Alicia, that means that we're not revising. Yes, I sent one. Mm -hmm. So Sanjay say instead of saying drunk, maybe because it's tipsy, okay, good. Raphael is saying that instead of saying prison, um jail, you can say prison. And you guys I gave you all the example. Instead of saying that someone died, you could probably say that they kicked the bucket, they passed away, they went to meet their maker. Are you all remembering now? So if you all haven't been remembering, just remember that um, your revision is probably not where it's supposed to be right now because these are things that are paying paper one and they are constantly being present in paper one. So literary devices is a must. All the devices I give you under the hand of you guys, by now you guys should have known all those devices by heart along with an example. So if you guys aren't there yet, it means that you guys have been um, relaxing during this quarantine period. And you all haven't been revising like how you should be revising. Because this handout was one of the first handouts I give you all. Um, this is like the foundation to literature and English. So by now, this is like the alphabet when, when you all learn to talk. This is like the alphabet. You guys should have known this by now. Number 29, um, Jumani will give me this answer. It says the comparison between the paper casings and homemade sausage in lines 14 to 15 is a reference to what? So why did she mention um, when the poet made the comparison between the paper casings and the homemade sausage, it was to do what? So let me just show you back that line here. So it says her tightly braided hair turning white, her hands quick, filling the paper casings like homemade sausage. So when she mentions that line, the comparison was being made to do what? To show us what? Um, quantity means. Hello, Miss. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. I'm saying, is it quantity? It's not quantity. Think so of a case and think of the sausage. They're describing the shape like a sausage, not to show the quantity, but to show what? Oh, yeah, the shape. Yes, very good. It is A, the shape. So that comparison was made to, for us to get an idea as to the shape of the case. Okay. So, Khadija, you're asking me to repeat something. What exactly do you want me to repeat? The answer for 29? So for 29, the question was the comparison between the paper casings and homemade sausage. She used that comparison to show us that the case that the child had when she said like homemade sausage, she was comparing the case to show us the shape of the case. So she was using the homemade sausage for us to get an idea as to how the paper case was looking. So the answer was A, shape. And number 30, it says the crawl space in line 19 most likely refers to what? So, um, Sorrenta, when they mention the crawl space, what is what exactly are they talking about? Let me return to the poem so you can see the line. So it says, it, it was in the last stanza, it says, there's money in the bank downtown, but this will keep at home, buried in chairs beneath the house. The crawl space filling up, packed solid as any foundation. So the crawl space, is what? What are they referring to here? Is it a large container, very slow movement, an area under the house or the foundation of the house? So the answer is not decent, huh? 
Try again. So it's not A and it's not D. So Shire is helping you out here. Yes, the answer is C. Um, there is, they're referring to an area under the house. So the crawl space there that they're referring to is an area under the house and it's literally called a crawl space because um, it's an opening that someone small like the child could crawl and enter. So the answer for Titty is C. So for the other section, um, it's a comprehension and it says read the following extract carefully and then answer items 41 to 46 on the basis of what is stated or implied. So when we, re when we read this, I don't want you guys to get upset because it is a passage that could cause a lot of chaos because they're talking about men and women in society, right? And obviously we have a mixed class here. Some men may think that, okay, maybe the writer has been a bit biased. Some women will say, okay, maybe the writer is not being biased. So let's hear what this passage says and if we could understand what is being mentioned here. So the name of it is who does what? And this is, and this is the question that between the sexes, people, um, you know, they like to say, okay, who does what? This is a male's job. This is a woman's job. So this is of um, discussion in society and a lot of people get upset for this right so let's hear what this passage is saying and if we could understand it and attempt the questions so it says it is quite outmoded today to label certain work as being suitable for only men or women for example we see men and women working in dressmaking cooking hairdressing the law and a variety of other jobs men work in heavy industries which call for physical strength. But apart from those, both men and women have shown equal aptitudes in a wide range of occupations. Many men like pottering about the home and indeed would do more in the home and enjoy it if public opinion had not ordained that most work in the home is women's work. There has been established a curious code of behavior regarding men's and women's jobs. A man can work in a cafe, wash up, and clean the floor, but he, but he would be doing a woman's job if he did the same work in his own home. He can lay the table in a restaurant, but apparently his whole personality changes as he passes through his own front door, for then he and his sons are considered incapable of laying a table, filling a salt cellar, or washing a teacup. He can make beds, clean and provide morning tea in a sleeping car on a train, but has no appetite for those simple jobs in his own home. In the army, within a week, he has accustomed himself to making a bed, lighting a fire, and pressing his clothes, but after discharge, he is treated as incapable of turning a mattress or given a hand with the washing or ironing. Similarly, women all over the country decorate their own homes this temporary, highly efficient manner. Yet, wielding the paintbrush in the decorating business is considered a man's job. It is a mystery to me how painting became the complete monopoly of men. The deafness and skill which women now have shown in other trades seem particularly suited to painting. Now, I can't imagine how, if the painting trade had been monopolized by women workers, the same quite irrational attitude would have been adopted, and for no other reason than a custom, men would not have sought work in that field. Today, with so much mechanization and automation around the corner, we shall have to reorientate. The woman in the home does a manual job, which saps her physical energy, we may soon find that a man's job outside the home calls for less physical energy than the one done by his wife in the home. What is woman's work and what is man's work should be determined solely by the aptitude of the individual 
and it is in the interest of the family and the country that this new approach be adopted. And the source is unknown. So, back to the title, who does what? Anybody wants to tell me what they understand this passage um, to say here? What was the passage um, talking about? What were some of the main points? Cheyenne, what did you understand from this passage? Anything stood out to you? Miss, well, I know they was talking about um, that men could do women's job. Uh-huh. So they did talk about that, that men could do women's job. Uh-huh. Um, Shalanda, what was being mentioned in this passage here? That's one thing they were, they were saying that, yes, men could in fact do the women's job. But what happens when they when they entered into the house? So shall I type your response to me and um yes, I can I, can I say it? yes Bala. All right, so they would do the female's job like if it's required from them at work, but as soon uh -huh. as they get home, it becomes a female's job. Exactly. So the passage was like pointing out how absurd it is. And they and they were basically pointing out some pretty ironic situations, right? Because yeah. one one thing that they were saying here is that you know if a man um if a man's job required him to lay tables, to wash wares, to sweep and mop the floor and so on, at work he would do all those things. But as he enters into the household, it you know it's like wow okay i can't do this this is not my role but only when he's being paid then he would do it he would do all those things outside the home at his job but wouldn't feel comfortable to do it in the home because of what society would think because even now when we see um males in the home doing a lot of cleaning stuff the first thing that we say is okay he's a bit girly because why is he cooking and cleaning and washing the dishes and so on we tend to assume right and then even if we see a woman doing a man's job, we say, okay, she's pretty manly. You know, she doesn't really act like a lady. So we, they're basically showing here how our jobs, how society uses the, our jobs. So, you know, to differentiate what is man's work and woman's work and who should be doing what. When in reality, we are fighting for, you know, um, equal rights in society, but we still have the mindset that, okay, this is a man's job and this is a woman's job. So it's pretty ironic and the whole passage is about irony because we are fighting for equality in society but yet we are still segregating and saying that only men could do this and only women could do this. And in the end, the writer is saying that, you know what, the only way that we could classify a job as being a man's job and a woman's job is that we should just say, we should just let people do what they want to do based on their aptitude and if they, if they are willing to do it and if they are able to do it. Because there are some men who do a woman's job better than some women, and there are some women who do a man's job better than some men. So let's see what the questions are like for this section. So 41, it says, which of the following is suggested in the first paragraph of the extract? So is it that men behave curiously when doing jobs in the home? Men and women are equally able to do many jobs. Public opinion determines the jobs women do, or men prefer jobs which demand physical strength. So, um, anybody is willing to answer this question? So honey, I say in B, Yes, the answer is B. In the first paragraph, they did establish that men and women are equally able to do many jobs. Very good. So for 41, the answer is B. 42 says the main intention of paragraph two is to show what? Is it that a man should not do the same job at home as he does at work? A man has contrasting attitudes to similar jobs done at home and at work. A man can derive employment from doing similar jobs at home and at work or a man's attitude should change when performing similar tasks at home and at work. So 42, um, Sanjay saying D is not D. Try again. Very good. 
Honey, I say, yes, Sanjay, the answer is B. A man has contrasting attitudes to similar jobs done at home and at work. Contrasting meaning opposite. So he has different attitudes, right? The opposite. So at work, he would do something. And then when he has to do the same thing at home, his attitude would change. It would be the complete opposite. So 42 is B. 43, the main intention of paragraph three is to do what? So in paragraph three, did they stress that women possess skills and aptitudes which men do not? Did they show that a woman's nature is particularly suited to decorating or demonstrate the rationality of decisions regarding a man's and woman's work? Or D, indicate that men experience similar problems with regard to work as women do. So let's look at paragraph three. So this is paragraph three here when they were talking about women. So what was the issue that they were saying here? They talked about women decorating the homes and um, they do the painting, but then the painting is something that men do and they can't particularly do it. And if painting was monopolized by women, then men wouldn't do it and so on. So for so 43, what was the main intention of that paragraph based on the options? Any suggestions for answers? Sanjay is saying C, very good. And Hania said C as well, it is C. Demonstrate the irrationality of decisions regarding a man's and woman's work. Very good, so 43 is C. 44 now. It says according to paragraph four, mechanization and optimization might lead to what? Does it lead to an easier life for both men and women? household jobs being more time consuming than those performed at the office, an adjustment of our thinking with regard to employment or housewives would be more physical strenuous than men's jobs outside the home. So what was the point they were trying to make there? So Bala says, the, yes, the answer is the, they did say that the housewives was being more physically strenuous than men's job outside the home. Very good. 45, which of the following devices does the writer mainly use in this passage to present her argument? So does she use sarcasm, contrast, repetition, or exaggeration? So we know, um, so Chalisa is saying B, contrast. Yes, it is contrast because the writer constantly is comparing um, the man and the woman and showing the opposites. So 45 is B, contrast, good. 46 says, according to the writer, which of the following should determine what is a man's work and what is a woman's work? Is a custom, aptitude, public opinion, or individual attitudes? Which one should determine a man's work and a woman's work? So not individual attitudes, is not D. Try again, Regan. It's not A, custom. Very good, Sanjay. The answer is B, aptitude. And that's what he said in the end. The writer concluded in the end by saying that, you know, individual aptitude. So not individual attitudes, but it was individual aptitude. So for 46, the answer was B. So I'm sure you guys remember this one, items 47 to 54. It says, read the following speech carefully and then answer items 47 to 54 on the basis of what is stated or implied. So um, do you guys remember this? He's the man? This was a speech? Yes. And very quickly, let me just reread the speech for you guys so we can attempt the question. It says, he's the man. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the candidate for Dimsville. He's the man who will make all your dreams come true. He's the man who will fulfill all your wishes. He is the man who will stand by you through tick and tin. Our opponents say that he comes from a foreign country and he is not one of you. I must thank them for their kind comments because that is just what you need. His exposure to a developed world. He is equipped with the best ideas that will create opportunities for you. Don't you need steady jobs? 
And how about a school like that which the others with the which the other areas have? Yes, my friends, you need to live like value citizens, not like oppressed slaves in endless destitution. Your lives are not a journey into the promised land. You wander in a vast wilderness where hostile forces of humanity hound you with relentless cruelty. Your daily bread is sickness and worry, hunger and disease. Your hovels are dens of misery filled with empty hopes and despair. Have you considered the future of the children? Look at this man, the man who will make your dreams come true, the man who will give you your wishes, the man who cares enough to come to your village. So they are presenting a candidate here for us and basically the speaker is saying that, you know what, this is the man, he's the one to do the job. So think of an election period where they, they are presenting the candidates to you all and how they would introduce the candidates and what would be said about the candidates. So 47 says the purpose of this speech is to do what? So comment your answers to me. Let me see what you guys came up with. What is the purpose of this speech? Very good. The answer is D, to persuade the audience to vote for someone. Great. 48 says this speech was most likely given at a what? So where could this speech possibly be given? Very good. It is C, a political meeting. 49 says the speaker addresses the audience as you in order to do what? So by using the word you, what effect does that create? Very good, the answer is D, to make the audience feel he cares about them. The next one is for 50. The speaker suggests that because the candidate comes from a foreign country, he will do what? So what does the speaker suggest when he says that the candidate comes from a foreign country? Excellent, the answer is C, that he would be an advantage to them. So, he, so they're saying that, you know what, because they have this foreign candidate, he would actually work as, an, as being an advantage to them. Fifty-one says, when the speaker says you need to live like value citizens, he attempts to do what? So when he says you need to live like value citizens, what is he trying to, to say? So if someone says you need to live like valued citizens, does it mean that they're living like valued citizens at the moment? It means that they're not really living like valued citizens, right? So why is he saying that? He's trying to say that, you know what, this person can make you live like a valued citizen. So I'm seeing you guys saying A is halfway the answer. Yes, you want them to change the way um, they view their life, but something else you want to add to that response. The answer is D, great job. It says change the villagers' view of their lives so that they choose this candidate. 52 says the name Dimsville is suitable for the village because of what? So why was that name suitable? So the name of the village is called Dimsville. So it, it is suitable for the village because of what? It's not because it is A, an important name. It's not A. It is D, the villagers feel hopeless because they lack basic amenities. Because remember, their current situation is not one that they are pleased with. They need to be treated better. So Dimsville functions there um, as a metaphor where it really embodies, uh, it's really comparing, you know, how their lives are at the moment. It's very dim, it's dull. 53, in paragraph one, the speaker repeats the words, he's the man because he wants to do what? So why are those words re being repeated? By now you guys should remember that I say that we always repeat something for, so why, why is um, he's the man being repeated. Very good it is B to emphasize the power the candidate possesses. And 54, 
Which of the following devices is not used in the speech? So based on the speech here, which one of the devices do you not see being used in the speech? So did you guys see any puns, any metaphor, repetition, or rhetorical question? Which one, which of the devices were not used in the speech? Well, I did see the name Dims, but it was a, was a um, metaphor. So we saw metaphor, we saw repetition, we hear the man, and we did see the rhetorical questions. So the answer for 54 is a pun. Yes, yeah, Sharanda, do you have a question? I got the um, the notification that you raised your hand. Okay. So I want you to look at this ad. This is the first time that we're doing this ad. And, um, this ad is really, it's really short. And um, let's see what they have to see, right? So it says, read the following advertisement carefully and then answer items 55 to 60 on the basis of what is stated or implied. So this is the first half of the ad. It says all this information in one small package. So you see in all this, and then it's being reduced and it's, it's more, con it's concise now. And it says equal to, so all this is equal to just one small package. And it is in, um, entitled Discover Asia Land Island. So I'll hear meaning island. So let's hear. So all this information about this, about this island could just be found in this little package, just one small package. So it says, Discover Asia, Asia Land Isle is a complete country guide, compact and portable, with information and contacts for everything from accommodation to restaurants to touring. Need to know where to catch a taxi? Here, steel pan, go bird watching or wind surfing, it's all in one convenient place. Discover Asia Land Isle is elegant in its design, colorful and simple to read. Open its pages and be mesmerized. Fall into its wonderland. Experience travel like you have never before. Discover Asia Land Isle. Available free at major hotels, at La Vizla National Airport and online from our website. And they even give you the website that you could visit as well. So what is the purpose of this ad? Just by looking at the image when they say that all this information could just be found in this guide. This guide is, you know, it, it entails basically everything because they're saying um, it's portable, it's compact, so it's, it's concise, it's small. And it ha there are contacts for if you want accommodation, restaurants, touring, taxi, seal van. Everything is encapsulated in this one compact guide. And even with the design, the same as you know, it's colorful, it's attractive, it's simple to read. When you open the pages, you are mesmerized. And this, um, this guide could, get, could make you experience travel like you have never experienced it before. And where are you gonna get this guide? It says it is available free. So you're not gonna pay for it. It is available free at major hotels. So when you visit hotels, you can get this um, guide free or at the Love Isla National Airport. Or you can even get this guide online from, from their website and the website is here. So let's see if we can answer um, 55 to 60. So let me pick on someone who could um, help us answer these questions. Anuradha, um, could you um, give me some responses? Either you unmute your mic and give me your answer or you send your responses in the chat. So 55 says, this advertisement would most likely appeal to who? So who would this ad appeal to? And Radha, are you with us? So you can send a message in the chat or you can unmute your mic and give me a response. So who would most likely be interested in this advertisement? Who would it appeal to? Would it be tourists, scientists, educators, or environmentalists? So 
So your classmates are helping you out. The, num the answer for 55 is a tourist. Yes, the tourists are the ones who would be interested in, in this guy because they would be the ones who would require um, information about the island that they're visiting. Um, 56, Sorinta, you have to give me the answer for this. It says the equal sign between the stack of books and the book Discover Asia Land suggests that the guide is what? So the purpose of that um, equal sign, does it show the guide is free, it is heavy, it's compact, or it's convenient? So when they put the stack of books and then they put the equal sign and then they included the guide, what does that um, equal sign represent? What does that mean? So it's not B. Try again, Sorrenta. It's not B. So the answer is not B. So when they have the huge stack of books and then they have the equal sign and the one single um, guide, does it show that the guide is free, it is heavy, it is compact or convenient? Yes, the answer is C, compact. It's compact because they're trying to show that it is dense, that all the information has just been, um, has been included in this one single guide. So the answer for 56 is C, compact, good. Um, 57, Rani, you'll give me the answer for this. It says the author repeats the words, discover Asia and Isle to do what? So why are the words repeated? Is it to persuade the visitors to read the book, to encourage persons to visit the country, to emphasize the experience of nature, or illustrate the various events of the country? So why are these words being repeated? Very good, it is be encourage persons to visit the country. So when you keep saying discover Asia land, discover Asia land, you are trying to persuade persons to visit the country. So the answer was B. 58, um, Raphael will give me the answer for 58. It says the phrase available free suggests that the guide is what? If this is available free, it means that is what? Very good. It means that it's not for sale. So you can't purchase it. You can't purchase this anywhere. It is not for sale. Very good. 59. Charlissa would give me the answer for this. It says which word in the second paragraph of the advertisement is used figuratively. So we have fall, open, discover, and experience. So let's look at the second um, paragraph of the ad to see which word is used figuratively. And remember, figuratively means not literally, right? So it says, discover Asia land Isle is elegant in its design, colorful and simple to read. Open its pages and be mesmerized. Fall into this, its wonderland. Experience travel like you have never before. Discover Asia land Isle. So based on the responses that we have here, which of the words were used figuratively so they weren't used literally? Is it fall, open, discover, or experience? The answer is a fall because it literally mean okay, fall down. They are using the word figuratively, it's, it's not used literally. So the answer is um, for 59 is a fall. And for number 60, um, Shane. Give me the answer for number 60. It says persons can most likely obtain a copy of Discover Asia and Isle from where? So where could you most likely uh, obtain a copy? Well, the best answer, remember that said most likely. So based on all the responses here, yes, you could get it at hotels, but is it the most likely place you could get a copy of it? Very good, Surinda. It is the, this, uh, the website when they say www.discoverasialand.com. Good job. So we went through all six, um, all the questions. You, you guys saw some new questions in that um, this advertisement was a new one. And when we even looked at the passage on, um, 
who does what work. So some of the questions you guys have seen before and some of the questions, um, it was the first time that you guys saw the questions. So overall, what did y'all think about this paper? This was a January 2019 paper. So what did you guys um, think about this paper? Was it difficult? It was a manageable. That's pretty simple, right? And it was simple for you guys because you all saw a lot of these questions before. So even, um, even the new questions too, they were pretty manageable, but the multiple choice paper gets easier and easier. The more you do the paper, um, the better your chances are scoring really high marks on the paper because as you all can see from this, from this, the questions repeat themselves, the passages, the poems, even the advertisements. So it's very important that you all did, um, that you all keep revising all the past papers that we have completed and you guys keep going through the responses as well. So please spend some time going through um, all the papers that we did thus far, although this is our last class, all the multiple choice papers that we did thus far, please revisit them, revise them. Please start to memorize the questions and the answers so that in the event that it comes in the exam, as you read the question, you would automatically know the answer. So let's resume with correcting our homework. Um, the homework I gave you guys were the May 2018 multiple choice paper. And I'm sure by completing this homework, you guys saw um, lots of repeats. So this paper was relatively recent. The first section, it says, each sentence in this section has either one or two words missing. Choose from the four options, the word or pair of words, which best completes the meaning of the sentence. So basically you're doing sentence completion here where you have to select the word or pair of words that best completes the sentence. So um, Shalanda, could you do numbers one to five for me? Let me know if you are able to read the sentences to me or how you'll be communicating your answer. Okay, so Shalanda will message me her response. And guys, please wait for Sulfur Shalanda to message her response um, before you all um, give the answers because she will be messaging me privately the responses. So wait for me to say the response or give you all the opportunity, the green light, to go ahead and comment your responses, right? So number one says, despite his short temper, his willingness to give off his wealth to help others to succeed, led people to call him something. So what did persons call him? So it's not B. Try and Shalanda. So it's not B and it's not A. Just remember, despite him being short-tempered and so on, Yes, the answer is C. People call him benevolent, which means kind. So the best answer for number one was C, benevolent, which means kind. Number two says, when parents display something for one child, the others are likely to feel something. So when parents display a like it for one child, the others are likely to feel one. So what is your answer, Shalanda? Yes, the answer is C, preference and jealous. Very good. Number three, an attack on someone when that person is most vulnerable may be something, but it's always something. So what answer did you have for number three? Very good, it is D, effective, but it is always unkind. Great job. Number four, while the committee members something insults across the floor, the chairman tried in vain to something order. So what was your response for number four? Yeah. 
The answer is A. So while the committee members held in Zaza across the floor, the chairman tried in vain to guess A. Restore order. Okay, so Shalanda, what is your answer for number four? Yes, it is a hold and restore at number five. It says to conceal his true activities is quite quickly something plausible excuse for his presence there. So what is your response for number five? So Sanjay is helping you out. Yes, the answer is a fabricated. Great job. I need a volunteer for the second. I'll do it. Okay, great job, oh, Sanjay. Wait for me to read the responses. Just give me two, two minutes, guys, and then I'll read the responses. So um, item six to 10, so it says number six, he was eager to share the news with his friends. So um, for six, I'm seeing Sanju sent his answers. Be so reluctant. He, said, he said the opposite was be reluctant. Yes, it is be reluctant, good. Number seven says many parents and even some teenagers do not approve of the amount of permissiveness in today's society. So a restrictiveness. Very good. It is a restrictiveness. Number eight, every effort was made to avoid the chance of failure. So what is the um the opposite of avoid? Eight, a ensure. Yes, it is a ensure. Very good. Number nine says the president of the students association never mentioned the treasurer's integrity. D dishonesty. Very good. It is D dishonesty. And uh, number 10, she seems to be sensitive to the feelings of others. So what's the opposite of sensitive to? Be unaffected by. Excellent. Be unaffected by. Very good, Luke. Hmm. So the next section, um, 11 to 15. So it says, revise each of the following sentences according to the directions that follow it. Do not change the meaning of the original sentence. Look at the options A to D. So what is this section called? It's been a while since we saw um, some questions here on this section. This is construction shift. I know this is a challenging um, section for you guys because it's difficult to reconstruct the, um, the sentences. So, um, let me see how well you all would be able to reconstruct these sentences. Any volunteers for this section before I select someone? No volunteers before I select someone? I can someone. go again. No, Sandra, you can't go again. I know this is a section that you guys hate. It's real easy. <laughs> So sometimes it could be easy, sometimes it's, it's a bit challenging. So um, since this section is a difficult one, I'll have five different persons um, do the options to me, right? So 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So Sanjay, you can start it off with 11. Angelica will do 12. Um, Alicia Maloney will do 13. 
number 14, I would have Bala do number 14, and number 15, Reagan, number 15. So let's go Sanjay with number 11. People from crowded nations can't, cannot get over the accessibility of Canada's natural environment in all its magnificence. Begin yes. with, it is impossible for, it is impossible for people to get over the accessibility of Canada's natural environment. Very good, the answer is B. So it is, it is impossible for people from crowded nations to get over. So the answer for number 11 is B. Number 12, if Charlie invites me, I will go to his party. So Angelica, you have to begin the sentence with, with Charlie to invite me. Um, if Charlie invites me, I will go to his party. Begin, the, sen begin the sentence with, with Charlie to invite me. Miss, I guess this answer and I'm guessing is um, A. It is A. Well, Charlie, to invite me, I would go. So the okay. reconstructed sentence is um, A. Very good. Number 13, more is experienced in one day of the life of a learned man than an ignorant man experiences in his whole lifetime. So Alicia, you have to begin the sentence with a learned man. So take your time. It says more is experienced in one day of the life of a learned man than an ignorant man experiences in his whole lifetime. So you have to start with a learned man. So a learned man what? A learned man experience more in one day? A learned man more experience in one day? A learned man experiences more in one day or a learned man has more experience in one day? So which of the options is the best? So let's get saying C. Yes, it is C. A learned man experiences more in one day. Very good. Um, number 14, Bala. She found even after she had made several attempts to regulate the sprinkler that the water was still reaching the furniture on the veranda. So begin the sentence with having made. So Bala, what you have for this? Having made what? How you will continue with the options? Having made? She found that even after she had made several attempts to regulate the sprinkler, that the water was still reaching the furniture on the veranda. I had A. A? Yes, yeah. the answer is A. So having made several attempts to regulate the sprinkler, she found that the water was still reaching the furniture on the veranda. Number 15 says, the cricket match ended abruptly when many of the spectators stormed the field. And it says, begin the sentence with many of the spectators stormed. Reagan. So we're gonna say in D, many of the spectators stormed preventing, not D. When the spectators stormed, um, stormed the field, very good, it is A. So the cricket match ended abruptly, very good. So the answer for 15 is A. Great job, guys. Numbers 16 to 20. So it says some of the following sentences are unacceptable because of inappropriate grammar, idiom, or vocabulary. Some sentences are acceptable as they stand. No sentence contains more than one inappropriate element. So you have to see like the one underlying part that you feel is inappropriate. Or if you want, you could choose D no error. So 16 to 20. Um, Cheyenne, 16 to 20. Sixteen is Miss read the sentence. Yes, you have to read the sentence and then give me your response. Considering the chaos you would cause if you were to resign, I have no choice than to refuse your request. See? Is not C. Mm -hmm. Why did you put C? Because you thought it should have been but? Yeah. Was actually a synonym for that. So the answer is not um, C. 
Kanisha is actually right. The answer is D. There's no error in the sentence. Very good. So um, number 17, shy and continue with 17. There is hardly a, cha a point. No, you may notice. No. You may notice the windows of the house next to the playground looks like those of ancient English cottages. Miss I put D. No, it's not D. There's an error. Miss, so I can answer it. Not as there, Sanjay. You may notice that the windows of the house next to the playground looks like those of ancient English cottages. So what's the subject of the sentence? The windows of the house, right? So that's plural. Look at the verb of the sentence now and see what's wrong. So you may notice that the um, the answer is B. Yes, it is B is B. Yes, it is. It's B. supposed it's to be look. Look, very good. So you may notice that the windows of the house they look like those. The subject of the sentence is the windows, plural, more than one. So the verb should be look and not looks. So the answer is B. Um, Shia number eighteen. There is hardly a point to our knocking as no one is at home. See? Very good. See, because of the double negatives in the sentence. Good. Number 19. Tom, the most talented of those music musicians who need help, has promised to give his services free of charge for any worthwhile calls. See? Ah, it's not D. Miss, is it A? It is A, yes. The subject of the sentence is Tom, so Tom needs. So very good, the, and the, the verb agrees with the subject because remember, um, this is a prepositional phrase, so Tom, the most talented of those musicians, the subject of the sentence is Tom, he is the most talented, so he needs. So very good, the answer is A, and number 20, Cheyenne. Any disease of the bones and joints which are due to deficiencies in a single nutritional factor can be prevented, A? Eh? Yes, it is A, it's supposed to be what? Um, is. Very good, it's supposed to be is, so any disease is. So our next section now, um, error recognition. So this says some of the following sentences are unacceptable. So we went through this like a section like this a while ago. So you have to look at the corresponding letters and see what they represent. And here we are seeing a difference in what the numbers, the letters represent, right? A here means that it is worthy or repetitive or contains redundancies. B here means that the sentence contains a cliche or misused metaphor. C says the sentence is incorrect grammatically or faulty in diction. And D says the sentence is acceptable as it stands. So error recognition, um, let me get a volunteer for this section. I'll do it. Besides Sanjay. <laughs> um, uh, Hania. So, Hania, would you be reading these sentences to me and giving me the responses, or you'll be messaging your response? Okay. So, you can begin with number 21. So, let me read the sentences for Hania. It says, number 21 says, there are many who have not considered the need to abstain from alcohol, but sobriety is truly the only option for one who wishes to engage in healthy lifestyle practices. And honey, I say in A, yes, it is A because of the repetitiveness. Sobriety meaning that you're sober, it means the same as abstaining from alcohol. So the answer for 21 is indeed A. Number 22 says, he wanted to beg for his old job, 
but that ship had sailed and he had to simply play the hand that was dealt him. So for 22, what was the answer for 22, honey? Yeah? Yes, it was B because we have the cliche that ship has sailed. 23 says, rising from the throne, the crowd cheered their noble monarch as he walked solemnly forward to greet the foreign dignities. So, Hania, what did you have for um, 23? You had D, no error. Rising from the throne, the crowd chair their noble monarch as he walked solemnly forward to greet the foreign dignitaries. So remember when we did dangling and misplaced um, modifier? It was dangling modifier and the misplaced modifier. Do you remember that? Who or what is rising from the throne? They have the crowd here, so it appears as if the crowd is rising from the throne. But who is rising from the throne? The noble monarch. So the phrase that is modifying the, the subject should be next to the subject. So in this case, rising from the throne is not next to the noble monarch. So yes, Shalanda, the answer is C. It is faulty in diction because of the misplaced modifier there. So the answer for 23 is D. 24 says, the moon shone brightly in the clear night sky. It's cool light a blessing after the searing heat of day. So what's your answer for this one, um, Nia? Yes, 24 is D, there is no error, very good. And the last one, number 25, when the clerk raised his voice in protest, his boss asked him to hold his tongue since, him, since empty vessels made the most noise and are often thrown in the den to be eaten by the lions. So what's your response for 25? It's not C actually. Very good, Shalanda. Yes, it is I can... Sorry, Angelica. I think that you were going to say B as well. <laughs> yeah, I was. Yes, do you want to tell us what why it is B? Because it have a cliche. And what's the cliche? Um, just now. Wait, what number is the second, Miss? This is 25. <laughs> right. Who is tongue since empty vessels made the most noise? Yes, empty vessels made the most noise. Excellent. So I see you guys are getting the hang of this. So the answer for 25 was indeed B. The next section, um, we have the first poem. And how many times have we seen this poem before? An even shape. I think by now we, we all should have memorized the answers for this poem, not so. Anybody, when they saw this um, section, they, they memorized the answer and, did, and they didn't have to revisit their answers. Anybody remember the answers? Like right off the bat, you, you guys remember the answers and you didn't have to, um, you didn't have to go back to your books. No one remember the answers right off the bat from just seeing the poem and the questions? No, nope, I don't remember the you guys memorize your answers. So the poem is an even shape and we established that it's about an old lady where um, her neighbor is on looking into her yard and describing what the neighbor is seeing. So she's, the neighbor is saying that, you know, the garden is a hiding place for small girls. This, the neighbor is describing the garden for us, how it is neat around the house. And then they've given us an idea as to um, the old lady's condition about her frail consciousness. And she has someone there with her taking care of her. She has children who come to visit regularly and she makes treats for them. And also, um, how the day is like. Music is being played and the music is very nostalgic for her to reminisce on her past. And then the neighbor is saying that, you know what, just describing that every day um, has an even shape. It's the same, it's exactly the same. And the neighbor just wishes that she know what, that the neighbor sees 
something different besides what the neighbor already knows of this um this neighbor of the other neighbor so 26 um any volunteers for this section how are repeat them miss how are so Number 26 says her garden looks is an example of what literary device? Her garden looks. Oh, D. D. Yes, it is D for sanitation. Good. And 27 as well. The garden seemed crisscross in line two because of what? Why was the garden crisscross? A. Yes, it was A that the poet was looking at it through a lattice window. Very good. And 28 as well, so you'll do one till 29. 28 says, which of the following phrases is meant to be taken literally? So there's no higher meaning exactly what the phrase is. That's the literal meaning. Um, Sanjay, how are you still doing this section? Oh, what, A? It is A. The garden is literally a hiding place for small girls because they go and hide there. Um, 29, her garden stands neatly around her house, tells us that what? So how, this is the last one for you. When the line says her garden stands neatly around her house, what does that tell us? C. Very good. The garden was which surrounded the house was well kept. Um, 30 to 33, uh, Alicia Maloney, you would do this section for me, Alicia. So 30 says, it poet uses the words frail consciousness in line 14 to show what? So why were the words frail consciousness used in lines to, um, 14? So it's not B, Alicia, try again. It's not A. The answer is not, it's not A, it's not B, and it's not C. Yes, Raphael, the answer is D. She was 10 and weak and could hardly walk. Alicia, you'll do number 31 as well. Which of the following best describes the woman's extra thoughtfulness of her mother? So which of the following best describes the woman's extra thoughtfulness of her mother? It's not B, Alicia. Try again. It's not C. Miss, 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 I can see it. Yes. Is it A? It's not A. For 31, we're on 31 now. It's D. It is D, very good. Spreading out nostalgia through strings and flutes. Um, Khadija Francis, you would do 32 and 33. 32 says, if poet uses the phrase borrow children to show what? So the poet uses the phrase borrow children to show up. Khadija is not A. Try again, Khadija. E? If, if you borrow something, it's not your own, right? So what do you think is the answer, Khadija? Is not C. Miss B. The answer is B that she had no children of her own. And 33 says, which of the following were done by the children to show their love for the woman? So what did the children do to show their love for the woman? Shalanda, what you have for number 33?
number thirty three is not B. Think, remember again what the children did. So which which of the following were done by the children to show the extra thoughtfulness? Is not A and is not B. The answer, the answer is actually D. The children did all three. They wiped their hands before touching the china bread. They ate the sticky cheesecakes and they even gave her um, kisses on the side of her lip. The next comprehension is entitled The View from the Terrace. So this is a short and simple um, comprehension. Let me see. Um, let me just read this quickly for us to grasp what this passage was about. Please follow on your screens. It's a short passage, so let's hear what, um, what this person has to say. So it says, Marcus wheeled himself out to his accustomed place at the table on the terrace, and the sight struck him immediately. How could it not? It was an abomination, a desecration, a heresy, a sight unbelievable. There was a house on the hillside. His hill, the one which overlooked the village and which his terrace faced. It was a small house to be sure. He estimated it to be no more than 20 feet by 12 with one door and one window on the side, on the long side, which faced him. From the distance, it was no more than a doll's house or what a child might draw. A wooden hut similar to those which sprung up daily in the squatter settlements, which everywhere littered the hillsides. Ring in the city, visible evidence of society out of control. But his, his, but his hillside wasn't a squatter settlement, and no other house marred his view. His house sat on a slight rise above the village in the valley, and from there he had an uninterrupted view of the mountains on all sides. Far away there were houses, proper ones that is, but none close enough to mar his vision. It had never occurred to him that the hillside he gazed at every day would ever be defaced with human habitation. It was so steep and inhospitable. Few trees grew on it except for the occasional clump of mangoes. It was mostly covered with grass which burned every year in the dry months and the gaves which from time to time flowered yellow. Halfway up the hill and directly in front of his favorite seat on the terrace was the only tree of any size and this was a silk cotton tree which would one day become a giant, but which still was more was small as cotton trees could go. Year after year, he watched its progress as it shed its leaves in the winter months and turned a big green, a bright green in the spring. And now immediately behind his tree, as if sheltering in its arms, someone had built a house on his hill. It wasn't really his hill. Well, who else was there to claim it? Who else had gazed at it 365 mornings every year for the past 12 years? So I want someone to tell me what you all understood this passage to be about, Mamadou. What did you grasp from this comprehension? What was the passage about? Who were the characters involved? What was the issue being raised here? How was the person feeling about it? Mamadou, we are awaiting your response. Shane, I also want you to tell me what was this passage about? Please type your response to me. You can tell me what the passage was about, um, what was the issue the person had in the passage, who were involved, how was he feeling? So Mamadou and Shane, I'm awaiting your responses in the um in the chat. Just for us to get an insight as to what this passage was about. So the person is describing the view from the terrace. What is a terrace? We know that a terrace is sort of like um <clears throat> It's sort of like a patio. So a lot of homes, when you when you um, exit 
and you exit onto a patio or a terrace and you, and you could overlook and see um, your surroundings. So I'm not getting responses from Shane and, um, and Mamadou. Anybody wants to tell me what was this passage about? I just read the passage for you guys. I'm sure you all um, grasp something from the passage. We know that the passage mentioned Marcus. What physical state is Marcus in? So we know he can't use his legs. He is in a wheelchair because it said he wheeled himself out. And when he wheeled himself out, what did he see? And how was he feeling? We knew that he saw a small house. And yes, Raphael, he was extremely upset. And why was he upset? Because what what is it? What is his usual view when he comes on the patio? He sees and he says the hill is his own. So he sees his hill. He is accustomed with the, with the hill having the tree and so on. But one day he rolls out onto the patio and he sees a, a house. And it's not a, it's not a fancy house. It's sort of like a squatting settlement, a, a squatting house. And he describes it to be like a dollhouse. It's very small. And he gets really upset because he says, you know what, this is my hill. I don't want this happening, this, this sort of squatting development on my hill. I'm here 365 mornings every year. And I've been looking after this hill, watching this hill, and now my view has been interrupted. So 34 says, which word best describes the homeowner's attitude towards the hillside near his house? So come on, your answers to me. Which, which word best describes the homeowner's attitude? So it's not, he's not pleased. How does he feel about the hillside? He's not angry about the hillside. Possessive. It is the possessive because he keeps saying that the hell is his own. So he's acting very possessive. 35 says the words struck him in line two suggest that to the homeowner that the sudden appearance of the squatter's house did what? When he says We're all sh shocked at the unexpected neighbor. Very good. It is see it did arouse shock because he wasn't expecting that, right? Um 36 says the phrase sat on tells us that the house is what? Comfortably situated on the hill. B. Yes, if you are sitting, um, if you are using the expression sat on, it means that you are comfortably situated. So yes, the answer is B. I don't want Sandra to give me all the answers. Let me hear from the rest of you all. Angelica number 37. Which of the following did the homeowner believe gave him the right to claim the hill? Um, Miss, I had D, but I think that wrong. I don't know. It's not D. Okay. So what justification he gave as to why, you know, this hill is mine? Um, C, the, the length of time he lived Very there. Very good. It is C, the length of time he lived there because he said, you know, it's not my hill, but you know what? Who else is there for the past 12 years? I've been here. 365 days, so he's justifying why, you know, this gave him the right to claim the hill. Raphael, number 38, it says the word littered highlights the owners believe that the squatter settlements were what? If you use a word like litter, litter is usually something that's negative, right? That's usually a negative description. It's not seen. Try and Raphael is not seen. Very good. 
There, um, it's not B. We are on number 38 right now. It is A. The answer was a blemish. And if something is a blemish, you know, it's sort of like a flaw, it's an imperfection that exists. So for 38, the answer was A. Number 39, which of the following best, capture, best captures the homeowner's biggest fear? So what was his fear? Um, Khadija, what was his fear in number 39? So for Khadija is asking for the answers for 36 and 37. 36 was B and 37 was C. Khadija, I want you to give me the response for um, 39. Which of the following best captures the homeowner's biggest fear? Do you have a response for 39? C, yes, the answer is C, that the hillside would become a squatter settlement. That's what he was most concerned about. Very good. Rani will do 40. It says the repetition of his hill by the narrator does what? When he keeps saying his hill, his hill. Yes, the answer is D, it emphasizes the passion behind his attitude. Good. And 41, Reagan. Which words best sum up the homeowner's view of squatter's settlement? So how does he feel about um, the squatter's settlement, Reagan? If you had to use some um, words here. What does a squatter in settlement represent for him? Yes, it is B, very good, a society out of control. The next comprehension is entitled The Oceans. Um, do you guys remember this passage? About the oceans and to the prejudice eyes, uh, what persons have to say about the oceans? So they're talking about, you know, sea exploration, not much time is spent or money is invested into sea exploration. And there's still lots of things that we don't know about the oceans. So 42 says the writer's main purpose in the extract is to do what? What was the main purpose in the extract, um, Hania? Okay, so we probably lost Hania. What was the main purpose? Very good, Cheyenne. The answer is A, to show that the ocean is very diverse. Good. 43 says the word prejudice in line one is nearest in meaning to what? So if you had to find a synonym for prejudice, which one of the options would be um, best suited here? Very good, Shalanda. The answer is B, bias. You're being prejudiced, you're being biased. Forty-four says the writer says that prejudice eyes see the oceans as being as homogeneous as outer space. Lines one to two. This description suggests that the oceans seem to be what? So when they say that um is is as homogeneous as outer space, very good, Shalanda. The answer is D. It is seen as one continuous stretch of water. Forty-five, Sorrenta, you would do this one. It says the statement, some marine creatures treat the whole maritime world as their oyster, suggests that the creatures are what? So Sorinda, what did you have for 45? When we say that they treat the maritime world as their oyster, The answer is not A. The answer is indeed D. Move freely throughout the ocean. So that is the answer. Very good. 46 says, according to the extract, patchiness refers to what? 
So when they mentioned the word patchiness, what is that referred to in 46? Shalanda, what did you have for 46? Very good. Patchiness refers to A variation. 47. Shane, 47. It says, which of the following best describes the type of writing in the extract? So if you had to um, classify the type of writing, Shane, what would you um, classify the writing as being? It's not B narrative. Mrs. D. It is the argumentative because he's arguing about the ocean and he's saying that you know what, um, people assume too much about it and he's actually providing evidence about the ocean for us not to be, um, not to be biased and prejudiced. 48 says, according to the extract, which of the following statements is false? So Angelica, what did you have for 48? Um, A. The answer is A. There are more species on land than in the ocean, girl. Um, Musa, 49, because there are so many different ways of making a living in the ocean, refers to what? There's so many ways of making a living in the ocean. What does that refer to, Musa? B. The answer is D, marine creatures. Good job, guys. The next um, one is an advertisement. This is a short advertisement. It says, read the following ad carefully and then answer the, the questions. So you just have questions 50 to 54 based on this. So it says, the tours we offer are truly unique and very much off the beaten track. We take you into the country to experience the historical, cultural, and breathtaking scenic highlights of the island. Our rich heritage and farming over the centuries has produced grand plantation mansions surrounded by picturesque little copses with stately royal palms swaying majestically in the easterly trade winds. The neat sugar cane fields sweep down the rolling hills towards the wild east coast where miles of untouched beaches are graced with the backdrop of rugged cliffs and the giant breakers of the Atlantic crashing ashore. At Highland Outdoor Tours, the choice is yours. Whether you're the adventurous type or prefer a more laid back tour, just give us a call and let us advise you. So they're talking about a tour company here, Highland Outdoor Tours. And they're telling us, you know, what they have to offer, why we should choose this group to, um, to tour us around an island. They're telling us that, you know what, we go off the beaten track, we do so many things, we carry you to experience um, different places that other um, tour agencies, they don't offer. 50 says, the ad was most likely taken from a what? C, a tourism brochure. Good, see a tourism brochure. Um, number 51, Cheyenne, which of the following is nearest in meaning to off the beaten track? So what does that line mean, off the beaten track? A. Not A. D. It is actually D, a long route not regularly traversed. 52, Bala, which of the following does the advertisement promise? So does it promise scenic beauty, sedate enjoyment, or outdoor adventure? D. Bala, Sanjay, Bala. So Bala is giving his response here. The answer is D, all three of the above. Number 53, Reagan. The phrase, the niche sugar cane fields sweep down the rolling hills contains an example of what? Yes, Reagan, the answer is a contrast, very good. And 54, Shalanda, this advertisement seeks to persuade the reader mainly through the use of what? So what does the writer rely on heavily to try and persuade the reader? Through the use of what? Imagery. 
I actually am not to answer the question. Yes, Shalana, the answer is B, Imagery. And the last advertisement was talking about to join the Caribbean Miles program. And we met this advertisement uh, a while ago in a lot of past papers, where the aim is to try to get persons to join the Miles program. They're telling you about um, the membership, what the membership entails, there are different categories of the membership. So we have the silver tire membership and the gold tire membership. And also they give, they're telling us that you know what, if you join there, you are also going to be rewarded. And they give you a sort of a breakdown of it for the destination, the awards and the miles needed to, um, to get the award. And if you want more information, you are directed as to where you can go for the extra information. So 55 says, what does the airline promise if a person joins the miles program? So um, Rennie, what did you have for this one? What does the airline promise if a person joins the miles program? Yes, the answer is D, rewards for every flight, good. Um, 56 says, how many bonus miles does a silver tire member receive? So Raphael, what did you have for 56? A, yes, the answer is 3,000. Surrender, you would answer 57. It says, to which of the following destinations can a person fly using 25,500? So what is your answer, Sarinda? So Sarinda, are you still thinking about your response? So just remember, under each category, under each destination, they give us the awards and the miles necessary, right? So in this instance, they are telling us about um, if the airline miles is 25,500, which destination could this person fly? So certain that the answer is not A, try again. So just remember the number 25,500. Let me go back up to the picture so you can see um, what is being said here. Based on the image here, do you see anything saying 25,500? And what's the location that they gave you? So we do see it here. So let's look at the options and see which one um, is best suited. Yes, the answer is the North America, very good. 58 says, according to the ad, what should a prospective member do if more detailed information is needed about the program, about the benefits of the program? So um, Mamadou, what did you have for 58? According to the ad, what should a prospective member do if more detailed information is needed about the benefits of the program? Yes, Mamadou, the answer is B, visit the airline's webpage. 59 says, which technique does the advertisement use to appeal to travelers to join the MILES program? So, um, Khadija, what did you have for this one? Which, which technique does the ad use to appeal to travelers to join the MILES program? Sanjay, I'm not going to ask you again to um, stop giving the responses when I didn't ask for the responses. I really want to see if the other students are following if they are doing the homework and also if they are understanding. So do not comment the answers. I'm not going to ask you for, an, for a last time. Miss, I put A. A. The answer is a fax because everything that is that is being said here is true. So very good. And um, 60, Alistair Maloney, it says the main purpose of the advertisement is to encourage persons to do what? 
So just remember, Alessia, they were talking about to join the program, the Caribbean Miles program. So what is the main purpose? Yes, the ad has different purposes. It gives us different information, but what was the overall purpose, Alessia? Very good. It is D, to become members of the Miles program. So put your total out of 60 for me and comment your, um, your total in the chat so that I can see what you got. So Sanjay got 57, excellent. Raphael, 53, excellent work. You, uh, you guys are in your 50s. Alicia, very good work. And Khadija as well. You guys have improved a lot. Excellent work, Shalanda, 56. Very good. Angelica, excellent, 50. Remember, I did say for this last time, I want to see you all in your 50s, so. You guys are doing great. I'm seeing a lot of 50s. Very good. Very good work, Cheyenne. Very good, Sarenta. I'm awaiting the total for the rest of you all. So just remember, for multiple choice, um, our aim was to get more than 40. And I did say for this last time around, I want to see as many of you all as possible getting in your 50s. And I'm seeing a lot of you all getting in your 50s. Excellent work, Rennie. And if you'll continue like this, I guarantee you're going to do pretty well in the exam. Very good work, Shane. Excellent, Musa. So remember, hey, uh, my, my aim for you guys for this class was to get about 50. And for those of you all who are getting below, who are getting below um, 30 and you all got in your late 40s and so on, excellent work because that was a drastic improvement. Any more totals? Do you guys have any more totals? Any more totals you want to give? Did everyone send their mark? I missed the marks for a few persons. No, get it doesn't see itself. Anybody has to also send? That's it. Alicia Maloney, did you send me to all? How are I mean, where's your total? Mamadu Regan, did you send me to all? Okay, yes, Alicia, I'm seeing your total. Very good work, Regan. Um, Mama, did you send your total? So I've noticed that a lot of you all have improved, which is really, really, really good. Because my aim for you guys is that I wanted you all to, um, so obviously get better than the previous week. And I did want to see um, you guys reaching the 50s and I'm very um, proud of you all because many of you are reaching the 50s. Please continue revising your multiple choice papers. All of this is our last class. Please continue revising the papers, revise them alongside the answers as well because as you know, the multiple choice, everything repeats. So please have your answers alongside the papers and keep revisiting them, try to memorize the answers 
so that when you see the passage, the poem, the questions, and you see, and, 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 and whatever section of the paper you reach, once you see the questions, you should automatically remember the, um, the answer. So that's the aim. The aim is that when you all keep redoing the papers, that you all have the answers memorized in your head, that you don't have to revisit your books for the answers. So even in your own time, you all can practice doing the papers again by yourselves and see how well you remember, and then use your books and, and correct it as well, because multiple choice is all about trying to remember the answers. So you all have the blank question papers. So sit again um, in the upcoming weeks, uh, sit with the blank papers by yourselves, trying to do over the paper to see how much you remember and then revisit your answers from your book and correct it. So I want you all to spend some time doing, um, doing the papers over and over again until you get it right. And you have reached the stage that when you see the questions, you automatically remember the answers, okay? So please use the upcoming weeks to, um, to continue revising your work and don't spend um, a lot of time just relaxing and leaving your work there. Don't let this mark that you get today, um, you know, be a mark where you are just settled or anything that, okay, I'm good to go. I don't need to revise again. I don't want you all to be under that assumption. So please continue revising and redoing the question papers again and use the answers so that um, you guys can continue um, doing the papers over and over again until you reach the point where you have the answers memorized and you're good to go, okay? So can you just say if you all will get extra past papers, yeah, uh, um, momentarily, uh, we, we will have the WhatsApp group, so I will, I will still send you all extra papers to so do if you guys are interested in doing extra papers. I did send the compilation of all the past papers from 2010 to, 20, to 2017. <laughs> So the papers that we didn't cover in class, you guys can do it on your own and feel free to email the answers, okay? So if in your spare time you want to do more multiple choice papers, feel free to do it. Um, you will have the Google Drive with the past papers. You guys have a multiple choice book that we completed as well. So feel free to keep redoing your papers. And use your time wisely to do as much work as possible.